Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to solve a quadratic inequality. Here we have x to the second power minus x is greater than or equal to 12. I'm just going to run through the steps. And this method works whenever you have an x to the second power or x to the third power, any higher power of um, the inequalities. Okay, so number 14, x squared minus x is greater than or equal to 12. Our first step is to make one side equal to zero and then solve for x. Make one side equal to zero and solve for x. So I'm going to minus 12 on both sides. Then that's zero. Then I get x squared minus x and then minus 12. It's greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so let me write this down. First step, make one side equal to zero. Then solve for x. Right, just solve for x as usual. So just pretend that this is an actual e equation, actual equal sign. Then if you want to do this, since this is x to the second power, we can just factor it. We can just try to factor it first. And this one is actually factorable. So let me put two parentheses. To get x squared, I have x and x. And then to get negative 12, um, negative 4 times positive 2 is negative 12 and together they add up to negative 1 so I have neg I have x is I have x minus 4 and then x plus 3 and then greater than or equal to 0 okay and then I want to um, just pretend this is an actual um, equation and I'm going to solve for x so uh, I'm going to do x minus 4 and I'm going to write this on the side x minus 4, I want to set that equal to 0. I'm just going to set this equal to 0. Or the second case is that x plus 3, I want to set that equal to 0 right here. Then, as usual, I can just add the 4 on both sides. Then the number that I'm interested in is x is equal to 4. The second number is minus 3, minus 3 here. I get x is equal to negative 3. So these are the two critical values. That we are going to consider mainly. Okay, these are the two most important values at the moment. So um, the way I'm going to do this is that I'm going to use a number line first. So I draw a number line, and I'm going to locate these two numbers on the number line. Negative three is smaller, so let me put negative three right here, and then I'm going to put four right here. And then let's refer back to the equal to the original. The original inequality we have a greater than or equal to. So we're always going to refer back to the original. We have a greater than or equal to. So that means I want to include these two numbers. I want to include these two numbers, the one that I just uh, found right here. So I will indicate that by putting two closed circles at a negative three and a four. Okay. Then notice that once I have these two points on the number lines, I have three intervals. The first one, the middle one, and then the right one, right? The first, middle, and then the last. So what we're going to do is, I want to check, because whenever you are solving an inequality, the answer is not just going to be a number, it's going to be an interval. Most of the time, it's just going to be intervals. I need to know which interval it's actually a solution to this inequality. And we can do that by, um, by doing this. Okay? So let's first of all pick a point that's less than negative 3. Pick a number that's less than, uh, that's to the left of negative 3. So it doesn't really matter which number you pick. Um, I can pick negative 10, right? Because negative 10 is less than negative 3 negative 10 is to the left of negative 3. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to stay right here. Plug in, x is equal to negative 10 into uh, this inequality. And I want to see if that's true or not. x minus 4 times x plus 3. I want to check if that's equal to, that's greater than or equal to 0. So. Uh, I can just do that by doing some calculations. So let's do it. So now I'm considering x is equal to negative 10. So x is negative 10, then minus 4, 
And then the second parentheses have the x, which is negative 10 plus 3. Is that going to give us bigger than or equal to 0? Well, let's find out. Negative 10 minus 4 is negative 14. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. Okay. Is that going to be um, greater than or equal to 0? Well, a negative, a negative number times a negative number is going to be a positive number, right? It's going to be a positive number. And if you want to work out the calculation, that's going to be um, 97. No, sorry, 98. 98. 14, negative 14 times negative 7. It's positive 98. It's greater than equal to 0. Of course, that's true. So that means, right, this means, actually, any number that you pick on this interval, whichever number that you pick, regardless if it's negative 10, or negative 9, or negative 8, or negative um, 3.5, as long as it's a number less to the left of negative 3, you are going to make this inequality work. So, for the solution, I'm going to include this piece of the interval. Okay? So this is going to be one of the pieces of my solution. Okay? Then I'm going to do the same for the middle piece. I'm going to think about a number that's in between of negative 3 and 4. Well, I can use uh, 0, for example. 0 is in between of negative 3 and 4. But I don't need to use 0. I could have used 1 or 2, 2.5 or 3.8, things like that. Doesn't matter. So I'm going to say, I want to check if x equal to 0 works. Okay. So plugging x is equal to 0 into... Um, this inequality. So um, I'm just going to write this down. So I have x is now is equal to 0. I want to check if x equal to 0 works. So plugging 0 into x, then minus 4 times x is 0 plus 3. Is that going to be bigger than or equal to 0? Well, let's find out. This is negative 4 times 3. Is that equal to is that greater than or equal to zero? Negative four times three is negative twelve. Is that true? Of course. Negative number is not greater than or equal to zero. So this is incorrect. So I'm not going to include this piece for the solution. And then I'm going to do the same for the last piece. I need to pick a number that's bigger than four. I can pick five, I can pick six, I can pick like a hundred or a thousand. Doesn't matter, as long as it, it's a number that's bigger than 4. 4.1 also works. But I will just pick, you know, 5. Just pick 5. So, I'm going to say, I want to check if x equal to 5 works or not. So, I'm referring back to this inequality. I have x is now 5, minus 4, and then parentheses, x is now 5 plus 3. It's that greater than or equal to 0. 5 minus 4 is equal to 1. 5 plus 8, sorry, 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. Right? 1 times 8 is 8. Well, of course, a is bigger than or equal to 0. So this checks. So this is true. So it checks. Right? That means I want to include this piece. I want to include this piece for the, uh, for the solution. So that's pretty much, um, we actually did the graph as well. This is the graph of the solution. This is the graph of the solution. Graph of the solution. What we want is, I want to have x is less than or equal to negative 3, or x is greater than or equal to 4. Right? So that's an inequality, and if you want the interval notation, Then, I want x is less than or equal to negative 3. I will write it as negative infinity, comma, negative 3. But since I want to include the number negative 3, so I'm going to use a bracket. And then the or, it's the union, and we have the second piece. I want to start off with 4, including the 4. So, bracket, 4, all the way to positive infinity. Positive infinity. And 
We always use parentheses for infinities because we can never include what infinity is. So it's either that you have to present your answer with a graph like this or an interval notation. Okay? And that's how you do it. That's how you do it.